Okay, folks, so for this screencast, we're going to do uh, Lagrange polynomials again. The, uh, the one thing is, is that I, in a previous video, I posted this function, uh, Lagrange poly, and uh, basically I have my uh, sample points here, and I went through the uh, linear and quadratic version. And the, uh, I had a question um, by a, a few students ar around the world essentially saying, well, this is great if I want this to only be quadratic, but what if I want to do like a third order or fourth order, order polynomial? And uh, that's a little bit more difficult. So um, basically, if, if you run this code, I'll post a link in the video or I'll put like an annotation over here or something so you can see it. But uh, basically, this is what I made. And so you've got, you know, the black line is truth, and then you've got the, uh, the three polynomials, L1, L2, L3, and then you've got L quad, which is essentially the quadratic polynomial. So what I'm going to do, just to make sure this works, is I'm going to comment out these, uh, sorry, I'm going to comment out these three, and I'm going to comment out the legend. And so the only thing that you'll see is the uh, truth line and then the uh, quadratic uh, Lagrange polynomial. So in order to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to essentially grab the um, equation here. So this is essentially the two loops. This is a summation loop and this is a product loop. So what we're going to do is code these two loops in. And what you need in here is you need the function evaluated at the sample points and you need the sample points themselves. And you also need x. So what I'm going to do essentially is I'm going to say, okay, fxn is my output. I'm going to just call the function L lpoly. I'm going to send it x. And you can see I've already actually written this, this function here. Um, so you can, it looks like it kind of gave it away. But then I'm going to give it the, uh, the sample coordinates and then the, uh, the function coordinates and then n. And so for this example, since this is a quadratic, I'm going to say 2. Um, so the x sample points is just, um, if you scroll up in this code, I've got x0, x1, and x2. Um, so I'm going to say x0, x1, and x2. And then uh, f samples. And since I have the function down here evaluated, I can just say it's f of x samples. And that's essentially going to um, evaluate the function at these three coordinates and give me f of x. And so f of x is right here in this coordinate here. Okay, so let's get right to it. So I'm going to make a, a new routine. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, delete that uh, example code um, real quick, you know, um, just just because I don't need it. I have a lot of other codes here, obviously. Um, interpolation, so where's L poly? So I'm just going to delete it, and that way we can uh, rewrite it. So basically it's going to be function fxn equals L poly x comma x samples, and then f samples, and then n, okay? And I'm going to save it as L poly. Okay, so our first loop, I'm going to put this over here and put this over here. Our first loop is this guy here. So basically, whenever you do a loop, you need to initialize your sum. And so I'm just going to say fxn is 0 times x, because I just want a vector of zeros. And then I need to kick off my loop 4. And in, in maths, you use i. But I don't like i because i is an, an imaginary number. So if I go to MATLAB and I type in i, that's an, an imaginary number. So I don't like to overload operators. So I'm going to put um, idx instead, and that goes from zero to big N. And then basically you just you just do your loop. So then you just say fxn is equal to fxn plus li times, and then this is where you need to grab your sample points. So these are your sample points. So it's going to be f samples, and you can't do idx. The reason why is because idx starts at zero, and in MATLAB the first vector, the first element of a vector is actually 1, so you need to do idx plus 1. And so that will give you uh, fxn like that. Now the problem is, is you will run into the situation where you might try and do an order n that is greater than the number of sample points. So what you need to do is, I like to do this, I'm going to put down here, I'm going to put a uh, error checking, and I'm going to say if n is greater than the length of s f samples minus one. I'm going to display. Sorry, you need more sample points. Okay, and so we'll we'll test and see if that works later. Um, but let's go down to here. So um, this is our first loop for this equation here. I guess this is equation uh, 18.20 from numerical methods uh, by Chopra. Um, 
And now what we can do is code in uh, 18.21 to get li. So again, to do a sum, I'm going to initialize li. So I'm going to say li is equal to li, or 0 times x. Now here's the difference. Since this is a sum, fxn needs to start at 0. But this is a product, which means that li needs to actually start at 1, because 1 times anything is itself. So uh, with that said, I'm going to put in li 0 times x, which gives me a vector of zeros, and I'm going to add 1 to everything. And then I just kick off my loop. So I'm going to say 4, and I'm going to do jdx, because if you notice here, this, this uh, counter is j, and just in the same fashion as idx, I'm going to use jdx. This is my style of coding, 0 to n. And then now I just write my loop here, li equals li times, and I'm actually going to do times l next to make this easier. And I'm going to say l next equals, and here's where I do the polynomial, x minus xj divided by xi minus xj. Now, if you look in here, this equation says when j is not equal to 1. Now that's actually a typo. If you look at xi and xj, this goes to infinity if xi is equal to xj. So what this actually means is do not do this if idx is equal to jdx. So you say if idx is not equal to jdx, do this. And that way you won't get infinity here. And now so the question is what's xi and what's xj? Well those are just your sample points. So x samples and again just like we did down here with f samples we need to do up here. So this is idx plus 1 because we can't start at 0. Remember the counter in our for loop starts at 0 and we have to start at 1 for a vector in MATLAB. And then this is x samples jdx plus 1. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and run this. It's not going to work and I'm going to show you, I just want to show you like one little quick debug thing that I, I found uh, when I did this earlier. Um, so I'm going to clear CLC, close all, um, so I'm going to go here, I'm going to test my error checking here, okay? So first, I'm going to try to do a fifth order polynomial, and it should say, uh, sorry, you need more sample points. And it looks like it actually ran the code. Um, so what we forgot to do is we forgot to type in a return here. So on line 9, where we, where we check the, uh, the length, and we say, sorry, we need to do a return. And that way we return a vector of zero. So let's, let's try that again. So now it'll say, sorry, you need more sample points and then nothing happens. Now let's actually plot um, plot x comma fxn and I'm going to do it in I guess red with a line width of 2 and uh, I'm going to throw a legend in here and I'm going to say uh, truth uh, Lagrange explicit and then Lagrange uh, computed and then so we should see yeah just a flat line because you need more sample points. Now if we go to um, one, now we're actually going to get this error here. So if you look, it says inner matrix dimensions must agree error in L poly 22. So if I click this link and go to L poly 22, what I didn't realize when I first ran this was Li is a vector of zeros, L next is a vector of numbers. And so in order to multiply two vectors by each other, you need to put the dot operator in there. So that's just a, a key thing that you, you can't forget. Um, so now if I uh, go back and um, again, uh, let me let me just do the zeroth order. I'm just curious um, We've got a flat. Let me throw a clear CLC and a close all um, You know, let me actually just throw that up here. So I don't have to do that over and over again Let me just throw it. Yeah, just like that. Okay. That way every time it clears this out. Okay, so here is a first order um, polynomial um, using the first expansion point um, and then Let's do the first order, so this will be linear, so this uses the first two expansion points, or sorry, sample points. And then let's go ahead and do a uh, quadratic, and then if you notice, the magenta has been dwarfed by the red because they're the same, because the explicit version should be the same as this um, polynomial version. Um, and so now if we say do a third order polynomial, well now it's going to freak out because you need more sample points, so let's give it more sample points. So um, let's see, I think my sample points are 0, 2, and 4, so let's give it 1. So let's just give it a 1, like that, and look at, look at that. So the red line has actually covered the black line, and so a third order polynomial has dwarfed a, uh, the, the truth. But that's because the function itself is quadratic. Um, 
if we change this to y sine x, this is going to give us drastically different results. And so now we've got the magenta, which is quadratic, and then the uh, the red, which is um, black. Um, we, we could get more points here. So I think it's 0, 2, and 4. So we could do 1, 3, uh, 0 0.5, and we could get a lot of points. And then that way we could do, say, a fifth order polynomial. And now we're talking. Now the Lagrange polynomials have matched up really well. Okay, so I'm going to uh, scroll through my code here so you can see uh, what it looks like. You can take screenshots, you can pause it. So again, we have the function header here, we have the input vector x, the sample points, the uh, function evaluated the sample points, and then the order. Uh, we initialize our sum here, we have some error checking here to make sure that we don't try to do an order more than the number of sample points, and then we have a double loop. So the outer loop here is to do um, this equation here, this is the outer loop. So we get fx n equals fx n plus li to f, f, f samples. And then we have the inner loop here, which is for the product li. And that gives us this polynomial here. And remember we have to, there was a typo in that equation, it's if idx is not equal to jdx. And then you're all set to go, and now you've got Lagrange polynomials that work for any order, provided you have the right number of sample points. All right, good luck.